Welcome back to One Piece Explained. The anime adaptation of Ichiro Oda's one-shot Monsters drops January 2024, and we recently got a look at the official poster as well as some key art for various character designs. So I thought it would be useful to talk about what Monsters actually is, how it relates to One Piece, as well as everything about its main character, Ryuma, who we've also seen in One Piece before. While I'll be talking about Monsters in the first part of this video, I'll be doing my best not to spoil the actual story in case you want to experience it for yourself come January. In the remaining parts of this video, however, I will be talking about Ryuma and what Monsters means for One Piece, which will include spoilers up through the Wano arc, that is, through chapter 1057 in the manga and through episode 1085 in the anime. Also, real quick, over 90% of people who watch my channel are not subscribed, so if you've enjoyed any of my videos such as the in-depth live action breakdowns or the weekly manga breakdowns, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. It really helps to support me and grow the channel, and you'll also be able to get my videos as soon as they come out, like my full breakdown of the Monsters anime adaptation that'll come out next month. So what is Monsters? Well, back in October of 1994, Shonen Jump released a seasonal autumn special with issue 39 that featured a short 45-page story known as Monsters, written by a 19-year-old Ichiro Oda. For context, this was three whole years before One Piece would debut in Weekly Shonen Jump in July of 1997, and a year later in 1998, Monsters would be published in volume format alongside four other pre-One Piece one-shots written by Oda, including a version of Romance Dawn. Now, this collection was titled Want and unfortunately was never translated nor published in any official capacity in the West. So up until now, most of the world has never been able to properly engage with these works outside of some rough fans cancellations that float around the internet. The story of Monsters is set in a Western-inspired world, and is relatively straightforward, featuring only a handful of named characters along with a dragon that threatens the town. Our protagonist is Ryuma, a wandering samurai with a strong sense of honor. Ryuma has a spirit of a warrior and sees the touching of two swords as reason to battle, which ends up pitting him against Shirano or Sirano, a gentlemanly European-inspired swordsman. Similarly, this stance creates an antagonist out of another swordsman, DR. Ryuma also meets Flair, a waitress who is the lone survivor of a town ravaged by a deadly dragon years before the start of the story. Now, back in July of 2023, an ONA or original net animation of this story was first announced with ENH Productions in charge, making this one of the only One Piece related projects to not be produced by Toei Animation, the other one being the 1998 OVA One Piece Defeat the Pirate Ganzak, which was produced by the studio production IG since the One Piece anime would not have premiered until a year after in 1999 with Toei at the helm. The full name of this adaptation is Monsters 103 Mercies Dragon Damnation, a reference to the the technique used by Zoro at the climax of his fight during the Wano arc. Now, this adaptation of monsters features many changes to the original designs of the characters in the source material, and given these, may even include new scenes or events as well. So let's go through the key art shared recently by the studio. The main character, Ryuma, has had an update to his kimono as it was initially portrayed as a solid color, similar to a tan or a khaki. Here we see it is now white with green accents on the sleeves and bottom, and a shade that is somewhat similar to that of Zoro's post time skip outfit. You'll also notice his stomach band now matches the one worn by the corpse of Ryuma during the Thriller Bark arc. Not only that, but his sword has been updated to match the modern appearance of Shusui with the red pattern on the blade. Now this could mean quite a lot for the significance of this adaptation as well as its canon status, but we'll talk more about that in just a bit. Shirano's design has been updated as well, though mostly with his face featuring a more prominent curly mustache and his hair being longer and curlier as well. Flair's design has stayed relatively the same, the most notable changes being to her hair and eye color. Her shirt design has been simplified from the triangular pattern that we saw in the source material and now features yellow instead of being a solid white. The most drastic redesign though seems to be with DR, as he is now a more portly rounded character with his tongue sticking out. Believe it or not, DR has actually made cameos in the One Piece anime on a few occasions, appearing on random bounty posters in the background, and in each of these appearances, his design was more faithful to the source material. He was even part of a montage of posters in the ninth One Piece movie, the episode of Chopper, where he was portrayed with red or orange hair as opposed to the purple that we see in this adaptation. Note that these are just easter eggs rather than any indication of canonicity. In his hand, he holds the Dragon's Horn, a mystical item that has the ability to summon the dragon. You'll notice this too has been updated in design, now featuring these jewels on the edges, straying from its pitch black appearance in the source material. Speaking of, the dragon itself is pitch black, and it seems to be very close in design to its appearance in the manga, with the western dragon inspired look and the crown of horns across its head. All of this looks fantastic, and I can't wait to see these characters in action next month. 
Now let's talk about the big question. Is Monsters canon? And more specifically, is this adaptation of it canon? I think the most responsible answer to the question of the one-shot's canonicity is that it's not straightforward. I know it's easy to jump to the SPS question in Volume 47 where Oda has asked about this topic and say that it is obviously canon, but Oda only ever speaks on the character of Ryuma and not the entire world in which Monsters takes place. Oda confirms that it is the same character, but qualifies the answer with, in the world of One Piece, he has already died from an illness and is revered as a legendary swordsman. There are also some inconsistencies with the Ryuma of One Piece being the same exact Ryuma from Monsters, such as his design not necessarily lining up. For example, the Ryuma of One Piece was missing an eye, which in all fairness could have happened after we saw him in the time frame of Monsters. But we've also had Ryuma depicted in the anime while he was alive, and there he has what looks to be blue hair, as opposed to the black hair in the source material. Not only that, in One Piece, Ryuma was said to have slew a dragon in Wano, specifically over the capital, whereas Monsters takes place in a western-inspired town. Though again, in fairness, there's nothing to say that both stories can't be true, or that his feat outside of Wano was repurposed by the people of Wano to have taken place within his home country. As we've seen throughout the Wano arc how these legends can be given a life of their own, or even at times, fabricated. Though, there are some interesting considerations to account for if the world of monsters is actually the same as the world of One Piece. Firstly, this would mean that Ryuma was alive over 800 years ago, the time of the Void Century. And this is because in the distant past, Wano was once a civilization at the base of Mount Fuji, but around 800 years ago, giant walls were erected around the nation, flooding the land with rainwater and forcing the people to relocate toward the top of the mountain, which is where modern Wano lies. However, this effectively closed off the nation from the outside, meaning if Ryuma were to visit a western-inspired town like that of the one in Monsters, he was likely traveling before Wano was isolated. There's actually more to suggest that this may be the case, as Gyukimaru explains that Wano was once known as the Land of Gold, and both pirates and world nobles wished to conquer it, but Ryuma defended the land from these people and showed the world that Wano was the Land of Samurai. This likely had to have taken place before Wano became closed off, if there were so many outside forces interested in the country, forces that know better than to waste their resources trying to conquer Wano in the present day. So, with all of this, it doesn't seem that unreasonable to think that Monsters was taking place over 800 years ago in the world of One Piece. But of course, this is just speculation until we get something concrete. The world of Monsters also featured a large western-inspired dragon, creatures that, as far as we know, don't exist in the modern world of One Piece outside of two artificial attempts at recreating them from Vegapunk. Though, Robin does note that the dragon's form is the same as the ones mentioned in the Legends, which may give more credence to the idea that the world of Monsters is the same as the world of One Piece, but just in the distant past. Even so, there's also the matter of Ryuma not having Shusui in the source material of Monsters. It not being a black blade at the time can be explained by Ryuma not having forged it into one just yet, but even so, it still lacks its iconic blade pattern and flower-shaped hilt. So, ultimately, while I think the Ryuma in the one-shot would end up becoming repurposed to be a very similar figure in the world of One Piece, I don't think we have anything conclusive to say that the entirety of monsters is canon. But I think that it easily could be, and I think that's where this anime adaptation comes into play. I don't think it's an insignificant fact that the designs of both Ryuma and his sword were updated to match their canonical appearances in One Piece. This is likely part of the reason why the reference to Zoro's 103 Mercies Dragon Damnation is included in the title of this adaptation. If the original monster's source material is not canon, then it seems possible to me that this adaptation of it is intended to be. The lore of One Piece is massive and told in various mediums, from the manga to its cover pages to novels, data books, magazines, and even parts of its recent films, and this ONA of monsters could just be the next piece of the puzzle that is One Piece. If Oda says it's canon, then it's canon. So, let's talk about everything we know about the Ryuma in One Piece. While we just talked about how it seems very possible for Ryuma to have lived during the Void Century over 800 years ago, there is no concrete evidence to give us a time frame for when he was around. He lived in the long distant past when Wano was known as the Land of Gold, when he slayed a dragon flying over the capital and defended the nation from outside forces. Over the courses of his years of battle, he forged his sword Shusui into a black blade and eventually passed from an illness. He and his blade became national treasures and he became revered as the god of the blade. He was buried in his home region of Ringo alongside his blade, where his body was preserved in what is known as an eternal grave due to the sheer cold of the climate. 
This is where he would stay for centuries until 23 years ago when a young Gekko Moria and his Gekko pirates attacked Wano and clashed with Kaido. While Moria would lose his crew, he was able to steal the corpse of Ryuma along with his blade Shusui. This would prove to be a great point of trauma for the people of Wano. Seven years ago, Brook's shadow was taken by Moria and implanted into the corpse of Ryuma. Wanting his shadow back, Brook sought after Ryuma and the two clashed. However, Ryuma easily overpowered Brook, cracking his skull in the process. Ryuma continued to be one of Moria's general zombies until up to two years ago when the Straw Hats made their way to Thriller Bark. Initially, Ryuma took it upon himself to capture the intruders, eventually forcing Nami, Chopper, and Usopp into Hogback's lab. There, he made quick work of the pirates and knocked them out. Eventually, Brook would try his hand once again at reclaiming his shadow, but despite the five years of training, Brook was once again overpowered. But this time, he would be saved by Zoro. So Ryuma and Zoro engaged in a fierce battle, and finally, Ryuma fell to Zoro's flying dragon blaze technique, an homage to Ryuma slaying the dragon and monsters. With this, Ryuma bestowed his black blade Shusui to Zoro. Now, two years later, Zoro would use Shusui to slay Vegapunk's artificial dragon with the EI Death Lion Song technique, another homage to Ryuma's slaying of the dragon back in Monsters, and Zoro would face scrutiny from the people of Wano for having Shusui throughout his time in the Land of the Samurai, even to the point of being tried and sentenced to commit seppuku for stealing the blade. Eventually, Onimaru would return it to its rightful place at Ryuma's grave, however, in exchange for bringing the national treasure of Wano back, Hiyori would grant Zoro the blade, Enma. Using Enma, Zoro would be involved in two more homages to Ryuma's slaying of a dragon and monsters. On the rooftop of Onigashima, he uses the flying dragon blaze technique with Enma, alarming both Big Mom and Kaido. And later in his final clash with King, Zoro would slay the flaming dragon created by King's extra large imperial flaming wings technique using his own King of Hell Three Sword Serpent 103 Mercy's Dragon Damnation, which would be used in the title of this adaptation of monsters, bringing it all full circle. At this point, it should be clear that there's something going on with Ryuma and Zoro. Not only do they look alike, but there are numerous instances of Zoro being used to pay homage to Ryuma's feet in monsters. So what is it really? Now at the start of this video, I said I would be talking about spoilers through the Wano arc, but for this final section, I'm going to have to discuss some things from the SPS of Volume 105. At the time of recording, the contents of this volume has not been fully adapted into the anime just yet, however the part of the SPS that I'm going to discuss has nothing to do with the contents of those chapters, and frankly, I don't even know if this will ever be addressed in the manga or anime in any explicit way. It's something only ever explicitly told to us through the SPS, so if you're comfortable with that, let's talk about why manga monsters really matters. In July of 2019, we got Ryuma's entry in the Vivre card data book where he was listed as Shimotsuki Ryuma, literally meaning Frost Moon Ryuma. This was interesting at the time because Frost Moon or Shimotsuki was only known as the name of the village that Zoro grew up in and was only recently being hinted at in the manga during the Wano arc as a potential family name two months prior in May of 2019 with the revelation of Yasu's full name. This established that there was some familial relationship with Ryuma and Yasue, who was the daimyo of Hakubai. Sharp-eyed readers noticed that some of Yasue's men bore a symbol that was also worn by the members of Koshiro's dojo in Shimotsuki Village. Soon after Ryuma's Vivre card's release, on August 26th of 2019, we would learn more about the Shimotsuki clan with the introduction of Shimotsuki Ushimaru, the daimyo of Ringo. And just a few weeks later in September, we would get the name of Shimotsuki Kozaburo, a blacksmith who left Wano more than 50 years ago. Now this was very interesting because prior to that chapter, we would learn in Volume 92's SBS that there were multiple people who had left Wano decades prior, and one of their descendants was a character very familiar to us as readers. Oda played Koi, alluding to this plot thread's potential inclusion in the main story in the future. At this point, some pieces of the puzzle were coming together for fans, and one of them asked about this directly in Volume 96's SBS. And so, in April of 2020, we learned that Kozaburo left Wano 55 years ago and ended up founding Shimotsuki Village as well as father in Koshiro, who was Kuina's father and Zoro's teacher. With that, we learned both Koshiro and Kuina were descendants of the Shimotsuki clan. But Oda continued to play coy, hinting at Zoro's involvement in this whole thing. 
The mystery would linger for over a year until August 30th of 2021, when Zoro's connection to the Shimotsuki would be speculated by the very characters in the manga, with Kawamatsu and Hyogoro mentioning how similar Zoro looked to Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who he himself was a descendant of Ryuma, even highlighting how both Ryuma and Zoro were one-eyed samurai and how similar Zoro's technique was to Ushimaru's, something that we would see firsthand the following week during a brief flashback to Ushimaru as he helped Yamato escape the cave. A few weeks later in November of 2021, we would also be formally introduced to Kozaburo, as Zoro himself made the connection that we as fans did nearly years prior, realizing his village was named after Kozaburo. We were so close to establishing the link between the Shimotsuki and Zoro, and some fans went as far as thinking Ushimaru was Zoro's father, but this was debunked in December of 2021 with Volume 101's SBS. Oda revealed that he had planned to show Onimaru express surprise over Zoro wielding Shusui and looking so familiar to his former master Ushimaru, but opted not to in order to not confuse readers. The mystery would continue for over a year until March of 2023 with the release of Volume 105. Oda finally gave up on being shy about sharing the details of Zoro's lineage and gave us Zoro's full family tree. With this, we would learn that Zoro was a descendant of Ryuma by way of Ushimaru's older sister, Furiko. Furiko was among Kozaburo's group who left Wano 55 years ago and settled in the East Blue. She had married a swordsman named Roronora Pinzoro, and the two would have Zoro's father, Roronora Arashi, which in turn makes Kuina and Zoro cousins, and Zoro the direct descendant of Ryuma. We finally got there. I know this was a long-winded way of saying Ryuma is Zoro's ancestor, but I feel like a lot of the magic of One Piece is in the real-time experience of sitting through a mystery unfold week to week, or more realistically over the span of years or decades. And while many of us were lucky enough to experience One Piece like that, there are far more people out there who have not. So I think it's worthwhile to preserve and relay the history of how certain plot points that we take for granted now actually came to be. And with that said, if you've made it this far, Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to help my channel grow and to be able to get more of my videos as soon as they come out, such as my weekly manga breakdowns or the full Monsters breakdown that I'll be uploading later next month after the anime adaptation premieres. There's a lot of big things coming for One Piece in 2024, and I'd love to have you on this journey. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next one.